I think it's time to start our lesson. Miss Mary? Uh, Miss Mary, what are you doing? Oh, I, I'm playing Mario Kart. Just, can I just have a second? Okay. All right. I guess we'll wait. Well, hi, Miss Mary. Are you ready to start our lesson now? Oh, now? Um, actually, I'm watching Lego Masters, oh the theme park episode, and it's really good. Oh, my goodness. That, well, have you seen it before? No, that is so great. I oh my love goodness. it. Totally into it. Oh, my goodness. That is great. But, but, but I think it's time for a lesson. Oh, but that's really cool. You know, I've, I've only got like 10 more minutes, so maybe we could wait. Uh, I guess so. All right. I guess we'll wait. Okay, Kathy, sorry about that. I'm ready. Oh, but, but can you wait? It's Seahawks season, and my favorite team, the Seahawks. See my t-shirt? I do. Oh, my goodness. I cannot miss a game. I don't know about you, but I can't miss a game, so it's just going to have to wait. Okay. Hi, kids. As you can see, we had a really hard time <laughs> getting to our lesson today. We were super distracted. I was on my phone and my Kindle, and then Miss Kathy got the all Seahawks, caught you know. up in the Seahawks. It's easy to get distracted. It happens to me a lot. And last week, we talked about the first commandment that says, love God more than you love anything else. Today, we're talking about the second commandment, which is, do not make anything else in your life more important than God. Don't these sound really similar? It's kind of like when your parents feel like something's really important, but they're afraid you're gonna forget. So they tell you again and again and again, like, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, do your homework. Have you done your homework? You need to get your homework done. I think God's doing that. He wants to make sure that we know that he needs to be the center of our life. He needs to be our priority. He needs to be more important than any of the distractions. So he tells us again and again. And again, and, and there's a great story about God just doing that with the Israelites. And we find that story in the book of Exodus in chapter 32. They had just got the Ten Commandments. They know not to make any idols out of anything out of the sky, the ground, the, under the water and the seas. But let's see what they do. It's called the golden calf in Exodus chapter 32. I'm going to start with verse 1. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the golden earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with tools. Then they said, These are our gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterwards they sat down, to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. So here they just got told not to do this. And what do they do? They turn around and they did it. I mean, they've already been told not to once. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to get told a second time because they didn't seem to get it. They made an idol out of all their jewelry and made it look like a calf. I mean, I don't know why they would worship a calf, but then why do we worship football teams and games and singers and other people. Why do we worship them? So we're not supposed to, are we, Mary? What are we supposed to be doing? We're not. We're supposed to make God the center. We're supposed to make God our focus. So how can we do that? Um, one way is through having something that we call daily devotions, which is spending time each day reading the Bible, praying, and worshiping God. I got a text earlier this week from one of our Lakewood Grace moms, Katie Aguilar, and she asked a great question. She said, is there a Bible website that you can recommend? She said, my favorite part of this stay at home order is doing daily worship with Emma Jo. Great question, Katie. 
We've researched some websites that we'll include in our email that can be resources for you. There are lots of ways to do daily devotions. You can read a story out of the children's Bible, you can use a devotional book, or you can access these websites. So Ms. Mary, one way I'm reminded to put God first in the morning is that I have this rock underneath my pillow and on it, and it bothers me when I wake up because it's in my way now. And on it, it says pray. And it reminds me to go to God first because if I didn't have that reminder first thing in the morning, I would just procrastinate and I'd put it off like, okay, I'll do it after I brush my teeth. Okay, I'll do it after I have breakfast. Okay, I'll, I'll do it after this. And I just don't get it done. So it's nice having that little rock to remind me to pray. So whether you pray or whether you read a story in the Bible or whether you uh, sing a song from church that you know, uh, whatever it is that you put God first in the morning, it just is a great way to start the day and your family. During this time of quarantine, it's a great way to start your day because you're not getting up to go to school right now. So you can start the day before you start your schoolwork. You can start the day uh, with a family prayer time, a family reading a story out of the Bible, or a family devotion time. It's a great way to start your day when we start our day with God. Matthew 4.10 tells us, Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Make that your focus this week. Have a great week and peace be with you. Peace be with you.